Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Harbor Freight 35 piece striking stamp set. This is a quarter inch die set with the full numeric and alphabet width and ampersand. Quarter inch refers to the size of these dies. They're actually quarter inch stock and the, the letters themselves are just a little bit, maybe a 32nd of an inch smaller than quarter inch. And you do indeed get the full 26 letters of the alphabet plus the ampersand. And then on the numbers, there's only nine pieces because you use the number six and you flip it upside down for the number nine. These are 15 bucks at Harbor Freight and they still sell these. This is an older set that I had. Uh, they come in a red case now. It's the only difference I can tell. There are much more professional grade versions of these sets, but they tend to run 50 bucks or more. And some of the... Uh, issues that you get with a cheaper set, we'll take a look at the Z here, is when they chamfer the end, they don't do a particularly good job. You can see they, where they overdid it, if we can get this to focus, right there where they overdid it, so it's real sharp at the bottom and it doesn't get quite as good of an impression at the edges of some of the characters. And a nicer stamp set uh, would have a better quality control in that area. So with these stamp sets, I will say that at least they appear to be manufactured pretty well. They uh, advertise alloy steel. Who knows what grade of alloy. These are going to be uh, probably a high carbon, very hardened steel that's annealed on the back side of these so it doesn't want to chip as much. You would tend to want to use a heavier hammer like a fuller or a two pound hammer. In my little demonstration this uh, in this video, I'm going to use an inappropriate claw hammer, but it'll be fine because I'm just doing soft materials like uh, aluminum and sheet metal and shows a couple of the techniques I've learned about working with both of those thicker and thin cross-section materials. These are the type of things that really will wear out depending on what you're stamping. If you're stamping a bunch of non-ferrous materials, aluminum, brass, copper, etc., uh, or sheet products, They'll last a real long time. If you're trying to put stamps into things like, you know, wrenches, wrenches are pretty hard steel. And you may get away with stamping a few wrenches with these, but pretty soon you'll just end up flattening out the letter. And that's inevitably what happens with these. The amount of life you get out of them is highly dependent on what you're doing. Now, another nice thing is with these letters, particularly the letter X, if you have some kind of uh, tool or handle or something like that that may be made out of you know it's harder when it's steel but when it's aluminum it's real easy to use the X and put a whole bunch of X's and then you, that be, becomes not a knurled surface but a highly textured surface that's easier to grip onto. And one of the biggest issues people have uh, with these is one you know trying to test out so you can get an idea of how much striking force you need for a particular stamping job that you're doing it is easier for you to hit a little bit lighter and then go over the top of it again if it's not deep enough for you most times you do want to have something pretty solid so either a concrete floor or a nice block of metal or something like that the exception is when you are trying to stamp sheet metal goods you need something under it to provide a little bit of cushion for the metal to displace these are especially handy for situations where you may want to invest and boss something that's plastic you wouldn't do this in a striking fashion you wouldn't want to hit this with a hammer but you can heat these up now you wouldn't want to get them super hot where they're glowing red because it is heat treated steel but you could certainly hold a torch to them for a few seconds or five seconds or something like that to get them just hot enough to melt in the plastic like when you get refurbished power tools like DeWalt has this program where you can send them any tool and even if it's been run over by a train uh, for half the price of the retail product so if it was a hundred dollar drill you could send them a drill that was in a house fire and for fifty dollars they'd rebuild it but they do a uh, heat stamped R somewhere on the tool so that they know it's been a refurbished tool and you can do the very same thing with these and just heat it up and be able to put some characters on it. There is an art to using these. I'm not particularly good at it. Um, but some things you need to be careful of is you need to make sure that the letter is the, facing the correct direction. Like here's the C and it would facing me it would be backwards but once we flip it over it would be the correct direction. So it's easy to get these upside down or even turn sideways which isn't uh, a good thing. On top of that, just making sure that they're generally straight, that each of the letters is equally spaced apart, and that they're not floating up and down 
um, really can be challenging. You want to put a piece of tape or some kind of marking just to help guide you as you use these stamps. Otherwise, you have some real funky looking words if uh, you are actually trying to stamp out some words rather than just a couple, three characters for initials. Pretty frustrating when you stamp something and then realize that you've uh, uh, got a letter upside down or sideways or something like that. And I'll make a note, uh, point of that is it's pretty hard to erase these types of, of stamps, that's for sure. They also have a little 8th inch set or a 316 set, a smaller one than this, and I think that might be kind of neat. But the bigger sets have uh, more meat along among the characters, and so they will uh, provide you longer life, and then of course an easier to read and a little bit deeper embossing. Let's take a quick look at these. Uh, in action. We'll do it on a couple pieces of material here. All right, here we go. We'll just do a quick little demonstration here. I'll just do a, a couple quick stamps with the ampersand here and then maybe spell out the first name of my channel and I'll show a tip about stamping thin projects. But we do have an ampersand here. Let's make sure I have it in the correct direction. And on something like aluminum, you don't have to hit too hard. But it's surprising how much force Another aspect I forgot to mention earlier is trying to make sure that they're sitting flush and flat. There really is a lot of technique. And I even forgot myself, it's been a while, this is 6061T6 aluminum. And you really do need a bit of force. This is an inappropriate hammer. It annoys my subscribers whenever I use it. And you really, I really should be using something much heavier. We're going to go ahead and try this one more time here. Really trying to hold it down. You can feel it where it's flush. You can see that square. Not quite as good as I had hoped, but still pretty nice. And it's pretty nice that you can have that kind of control with these, really. In a material like brass or copper, that would be just the right amount of force. And really on aluminum, that's just fine as well. Another dynamic to these is a character like this ampersand has a lot of material. It's going to take more force to upset something or to drive this the same depth in this piece of aluminum than it is, say, the letter I here, which is just a line. This little line is really easy to go way too deep. Just like that. It's much, much deeper, and I hit it nowhere near as hard. Well, maybe not nowhere near, but not as hard as this right here. Anyway, on to the little tip about sheet metal. With it, sheet metal, if you just use the stamps and you have something proper, this is a pretty thick piece of steel, uh, to provide a good solid uh, backing when you're stamping, this piece of material is too thin. You're going to end up, what you're doing with the stamp in this situation is there's not really enough cross section to upset. You're actually trying to cut it out like a cookie cutter. And so you want to put something under it. Wood, unless it's like oak, really is too soft. You know, a paperback book isn't. But I recommend something like uh, a magazine. Yeah, it is a Consumer Reports and I do reviews. How funny is that? But magazines are made out of that clay paper and it tends to work out much, much better. Uh, it's a pretty optimal surface that allows the sheet metal to deform, but also provides uh, a fair amount of structure. Let me make sure. There we go. We'll just do that right. This. Actually, I went too far on that. Very easy to upset, upset sheet metal, but if you have a little magazine under it, then it really doesn't... Uh, uh, cause it to deform too much. I'm pretty, I'm reasonably close to the edge, and this piece of sheet metal isn't that bad. And uh, we got a really nice crisp stamp. And I forgot to mention that a second ago. Is you can, of course, always go back and fit it in right into the same spot and hit it again to get a deeper stamping. You don't always have to get a deep stamp the first hit. Now these can be reasonably fast. Give me a second here, and I'll spell out. Uh, Caddis. Now I've got them laid out. If you're actually going to try to write something more than that's a couple characters, just use them. Uh, old printing presses, what uh, typesetters would do is they'd have a billion different stamps and they would actually, for each newspaper, literally by hand, each character is individually placed into these big uh, arrays that was the text to be printed on the newspaper 
using things that are very similar to these. So you just want to lay them out. I'm going to do caddis here, and so I've got the letters out. And in this case, you know, if you have to use a letter repetitively, you just know which one that is. I'm using one character once, so I've got five characters here, and I made sure that they're all aligned in such a way so that I'll just pick them up like this and be able to stamp my word out. And you can actually go pretty quickly here. Let's go ahead and do that. So that wasn't too bad just doing it offhand. It's actually reasonably straight enough. And uh, the characters, I actually got the leading, the spacing between the characters, remarkably consistent. So once you get used to these, you can actually write out quite a bit of stuff, and they're actually rather convenient. Anyway, sorry for the long review there, but there are just a few things I wanted to point out about these. It seems some people really uh, aren't aware of these, and I think they should be used more often. It's obviously much more durable to stamp something in the metal. And that they're actually surprisingly handy and not that hard or slow to use once you get used to them. Kind of a lost art. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.